and we're happy with our camera setup. Um, we've got our lights. We've really got everything we need. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually do just a straight render to Maxwell. So I'm going to switch over to full-blown Maxwell. Bring that over here. So what it does when it renders is it spits out an MXS file, which is the um, geometry in Maxwell format, and loads it in very low um, RAM usage, very efficient. Um, does a better job than Max does at that end of it when it actually renders. So when you look at the RAM usage when you're rendering a big scene, this isn't a particularly big scene, but if you did have one, um, Maxwell does a pretty good job of managing RAM that way, and you can use instances and that kind of thing. So now we're actually rendering. So with uh, Fire, it's using sort of a draft render engine that never really um, gets that clean, uh, whereas now we're rendering the full-blown engine. And there's a couple, you know, there's a whole interface here. I won't get into it too much. I'll just hit some of the important points uh, in case anyone watching doesn't know what these things um, are. But basically, uh, the most important stuff is up here. So this is giving you a really detailed status of where you're at in your render. So sampling level or SL number, we're at 9 right now. It's going to stop at 12. Um, and then we'd have to determine, is that clear enough or not? We can see noise here right now. It's clearing up over time, but there's noise there right now. Um, it's telling you how long you have to wait till the next sam full sampling level happens, so 33 seconds and counting. Um, kind of a redundant number here, uh, counting down to the update, same, same thing really. Um, time passed, how long you've been rendering. Time left, this is important because based on how quickly it's rendered up to this point and what sampling level you're at, it's sort of exponential. It's, it's the um, bouncing of light around exponentially. It will go on forever. Maxwell would render um, infinitely if you allowed it to, and it would just forever get more and more accurate and refined. Um, so time left is really just telling you how long you have until you hit that sampling level you, you wanted. Um, and then the last number is actually maybe the most important number. This is the benchmark number. And Maxwell has a built-in um, you know, benchmarking system, basically. It gives you a number telling you how efficient your render is um, or how quickly it's cleaning up relative to your render time. Because that's really all render time is in Maxwell, being brute force uh, or unbiased, is that uh, all you want is it to clean up. If it cleans up at sampling level 6, well, then you're, you're done. You don't only have to go to 6. But typically 12 to 16 is where you want to be. Um, sometimes you can get noisy renders um, at sampling level of 16, and you'd have to go further, or you'd have to, whoop, or you'd have to uh, adjust materials and whatnot. Um, I can already tell our windows, because we're using HDRs, um, and this is something to consider when you do use them as light sources, the windows actually are putting out less noise. Um, you can see over here. Now, part of that could be because it's more light. More light usually means less noise. Um, same is true in the real world for photographers. Um, now over here, our umbrella has more noise. Um, but our emittance isn't that different. Um, so you know, we'll be able to tell a little better once we get into compositing how much noise management we're going to need, that kind of thing. Um, often you can get away with undersampling. Actually, we're done. So that's reached 12 already. Um, you can get away with undersampling and do some grain management, just, again, like you would if you went and you were filming with a real film camera for a, a movie or whatever. There's always grain management to deal with. Um, you can't always be guaranteed a clean frame. Same is true in Maxwell, that you can take advantage of those techniques um, because the grain is essentially real grain. Um, it's not JPEG noise or compression noise or, or anything like that. Uh, and it's not using sampling methods like V-Ray and Mental Ray do where, say, the grain stays the same every frame, where the sampling is, is persistent, and your glossy rays and all that stuff to kind of shift through this steady uh, set of samples. And it can look kind of funny, whereas if you were doing an animation in Maxwell, you would actually get natural uh, animated grain with it, which sometimes can add a certain level of realism. But anyway, I'm running on at the mouth about this. So let's... Uh, Okay, so that worked. So all that took, that was uh, two minutes, two and a half minutes to get to sampling level 12 at this resolution. What I'm going to do is just bump up. I think we're happy with what we have in there. Um, I'm not going to try to optimize it any further. I'm just going to bump this up to 1,200 pixels wide, 1,200 by 800. And 
I was happy with everything we had going. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do now um, is I'm going to go in and I'm going to add the depth just in case we need it. Okay, so the only other thing I'm going to do, um, let's see, I want to turn this down. This is the min, minimum maximum C depth buffer, just like most other renderers need to set what that white to black limit is going to be. Um, I believe these numbers represent meters um, in my setup here. So let's just go with like eight meters, maybe 10 meters. Um, I don't know how far away that back wall is, but that should work fine. Uh, we're going to turn on multi-light. I could do color and intensity or just intensity. I'm just going to do intensity uh, because any color changes I'm going to do per light, I'm going to do in After Effects. Um, if you did color and intensity, you could do that in Maxwell as it renders um, or after it's finished rendering. Okay, so we're just doing intensity. I'm not changing anything else. I've already got the resolution. I'm going to leave the sampling level at 12. It was slightly noisy, but that's good because I want to show how the uh, green management works to our benefit. Um, okay, good. And we're just going to hit render. While that does its thing, we can talk about this other stuff um, and show you what that does. Well, first of all, once you have passes enabled, uh, and you can do object ID passes, uh, material passes, normals, um, world position, that kind of stuff, um, all that's been added in. You get, uh, OK, so I didn't give enough data, but whatever. I don't think we're going to use the z-depth in this, in this case anyway, but just wanted to show you that it's there. Um, you would get your passes over here, and you can just kind of cycle through them. If I had a mat ID pass, that would show up here or whatever. Um, the other thing we're getting is now these sliders, which weren't there before in the interface. This is the multi-light. Um, and I didn't mention it before, but over here is our little preview panel. This refreshes in between sampling levels. The, the big image, there are actual render, only updates on the major whole number sampling levels, um, unless you hit stop and then it updates wherever you are. Whereas this little preview will update more often. And what it's also for is if you want to use multi-light as you're rendering, or even if I hit stop, I could still adjust this stuff. Um, I can go and change this stuff. So I've got the window here. Um, and these numbers, or, or I should say these um, settings correspond with the settings in the material editor. So if you change something in the material editor, editor and come back, these uh, sliders would be different. OK, so if we wanted to say mute, or, or let's solo, let's solo the window. Here's our window. So in our little preview, showing us here's what it looks like if we solo that light. So we're only having that light on. Um, and when this gets to sampling level 8, which is in 14 seconds, it's going to update and just show that light. Um, but anyway, you can tell over here that that's what's going to happen. Same thing, we solo that. Okay. Um, also, we can just change how bright these lights are as we're rendering and update it real time. Set them back pretty much where they were. Now, everything I'm doing here actually is non destructive because we're going to composite it anyway. Um, so I can always adjust it later. Okay. Uh, also, over here is camera information. Um, wouldn't mess with anything over here, except for there's ISO, so you could change the uh, film speed, you could change the shutter speed as you're rendering. Again, our little preview. Um, and these correspond with the sliders here. So ISO, shutter, okay, but we'll put those back basically where they were. Um, again, all real values. These aren't mystery numbers. Um, a film speed of 200, you know, really means 200 speed film. Uh, shutter speed of 30 really means shutter speed of 30. Makes sense to anybody who takes pictures. Um, you can also mess with your gamma. You can mess with your burn. You know how much burn you have. Um, gamma essentially in this case basically equals contrast. That's basically what we're seeing. Uh, but I'm keep it at 2.2. You could also add simlumens. Um, these would create glare and obstacle map diffraction, scattering, that kind of stuff. Um, we're not going to bother with that right now. But that's basically everything going on there. So we're going to go ahead and let this 
um, cook to sampling level 12, which takes a little bit longer now that we've upped the resolution. So now it's saying we're going to have a total render time of, I guess, uh, about seven minutes. And a bar benchmark of 442 before we were getting around 680 or something. Um, partially that's because of the resolution change. Okay, so our render is done. It's about seven minutes to reach SL12. And I didn't want to go um, further or even go in. I could have reduced some of this noise by going in and either choosing a different HDR image, one with less um, straight just color data um, that has more, more light in it, uh, higher luminance values. Would have gotten a less noisy image over here. As we can see over here, a lot less noise on this light. So um, and we'll be able to split those up in After Effects and take another look at the noise. Uh, but anyway, we're done over here, so let's go ahead and save out this MXI, which again is, is sort of Maxwell's 32-bit format. It's like an OpenEXR, very similar um, multi-channel embedded file format. Um, actually, I've already saved it out, so we'll just leave that. They are kind of big. Um, this one's 60 meg, uh, but you'll see in a minute why all that data um, is in there.